Donald Trump has been complaining bitterly and publicly, we've seen him do it, about the teleprompters that don't work at his campaign rallies sometimes because Donald Trump is completely dependent on teleprompters to remember things like our next guest's name. Watch him struggle. With your help, five months from now, we're going to win Wisconsin. We're going to defeat your radical left Democrat senator, one of the worst, one of the worst in the Senate. Nobody even knows she's a senator. I mean, frankly, she's not doing a good job representing. We have somebody that's going to be great. So, but we're going to defeat your Senator Tammy Baldwin. That name was in the prompter for him just in time. In that speech in Wisconsin, Donald Trump insisted that living in Wisconsin is better than living at the ocean because the ocean has sharks. And then Donald Trump introduced someone to the audience who, like Donald Trump, lives at the ocean where there are sharks. I mean, what's better? Being with you right now. Look at that beautiful lake. That beautiful lake. Beautiful, right? What's better, this or sitting on the Pacific or the Atlantic, which has sharks? You don't have sharks, see? That's, that's a big advantage. I'll take the one without the sharks. We're pleased to be joined today by many incredible patriots, including the man who is going to help Wisconsin reverse every single Biden disaster, your next U.S. senator. And this guy is central casting, Eric Hovde. Eric, stand up, Eric. Come on up, Eric. And the weird thing about Eric Hovde, candidate for Senate in Wisconsin, is that he lives in Southern California on the beach. He lives as close to the sharks as you can get. Joining us now, Wisconsin's Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin. She's running for re-election in the United States Senate in 2024, and she actually lives in Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, Senator, it, it doesn't get crazier uh, than what we just heard. Uh, I know it, it must bother you that Donald Trump has to struggle for your name and doesn't know who all 100 senators are. Uh, and doesn't know, you know, what he's talking about when he's talking about you. Uh, but what what were you thinking when you saw that? Well, first of all, the shark comments. Oh, my gosh. So I don't believe that my opponent agrees with Donald Trump about the sharks, because recently, last week, he skipped out of a Wisconsin event to go back to his private beach on the Pacific. But, Lawrence, the most important thing that Donald Trump did say on that rally stage in Racine was that if he wins Wisconsin, he wins the presidency. And I know that Wisconsin is the battleground state. We could easily decide who controls the White House, who controls the Senate. We could even help flip the House in Wisconsin. But look, when I hear those comments, I don't work for Donald Trump. I work for the people of Wisconsin. And while my opponent was busy fawning at Donald Trump throughout that rally, I'm fighting for my state. But look, my opponent is a California bank owner. He's a multimillionaire. He is self-financing camp his campaign. If he and Trump win, they could pass a national abortion ban. They could cut Social Security and Medicare. They could uh, nominate and confirm more extreme judges throughout the country. We cannot let them happen. But if I'm going to win, I need everyone's help. Please go to TammyBaldwin.com and chip in whatever you can to help us fight back. Uh, and we, we also know if Donald Trump uh, were to get the Electoral College again via Wisconsin, uh, that he would easily make a deal with Clarence Thomas, uh, 75 years old, to step down from the court, from Samuel Alito to step down, both in their mid-70s, both of those men, and put on 40-year-old judges who will be there for the next 40 years uh, to go in even more extreme directions on things like marriage equality and other issues. Right. It shows you that with the stroke of a pen, our rights can be protected and our rights can be taken away. This week, we observed the anniversaries of two major cases. On Monday, the Dobbs decision that took away half of Americans' rights and freedoms uh, and so that we have fewer than our, our moms and our grandmothers had. We also today celebrated the uh, Obergefell v. Hodges case 
which granted marriage equality. And I think about uh, the joy and relief that I felt when that decision came down. You know, earlier today, I was with uh, a couple who were the first to be married nine years ago today in Dane County, Wisconsin. And they talked about how securing those rights to see one another in the hospital, if, if they, uh, you know, the visitation rights that come with marriage, the other key rights uh, and, and, and freedoms that uh, flow with marriage. Um, so we know that when we have courts deciding these critical rights and freedoms, we have to make sure that we have a democratic president and a democratic Senate to make sure that we don't see more cases like Dobbs in the future, because they made it clear in that case they are not stopping there. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.